Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. In this video, we are going to look into another database service provided by AWS that is DynamoDB. So, in the last few videos, we have seen RDS that is Relational Database Service by using which we can run relational databases inside AWS. But how about NoSQL databases? So, when it comes to non relational databases, there is something called as DynamoDB comes into picture and that is something we are going to look into this particular video. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So very simple agenda AWS DynamoDB, right? So first of all, we will have a quick glance at what exactly is NoSQL database. After that, we will see what exactly is DynamoDB. We will create a DynamoDB table. We will see how we can create that. After that, we will understand few features of DynamoDB, right? So in this video, we will understand what exactly is DynamoDB, how to create a DynamoDB table. And in the next video, we will see how we can connect to DynamoDB table from Spring Boot application. So that is basically the agenda. So let's get started with what exactly is NoSQL. So if you remember in the last video in AWS RDS video, we have seen that RDS is a relational database service. So it stores the data in tabular format. So if you see over here, this is basically how it looks. So we have this rows and column format over here. And mostly we have seen databases like MySQL, which stores data in this particular format. So that is basically a relational database. But when it comes to unorganized data, data which is not in a tabular format and not organized as rows and column, that data we usually call it as non-relational data. So when we talk about NoSQL, it is like not only SQL. So it is a class of databases that handle unstructured, semi-structured or flexible schema data. So mostly it is kind of a key value pair data or it can be a data in document format as well. So if I show you the quick example of that, then you will be able to see this particular data. So if you see this data is in a JSON format, which is basically not that organized, right? So it's a JSON data where we have user ID, let's say we can consider it as a primary key and to this primary key, we have this particular details, right? This is not organized data, unstructured data. It, you can easily go ahead and add other fields over here as well. It's just that the data will be identified by using this primary key and it does not care about how the other data is organized. You may add any kind of data over here in this particular document, right? So it's unstructured data. Now this particular type of data we can store inside NoSQL databases. So there are few famous example of NoSQL databases. So if I go over here to canvas, then you might be aware of MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. After that, we have a famous example, which is Couchbase, which stores data in document format. So it will store JSON documents inside your database. Now, similar to these databases, AWS have its own NoSQL database, right? Similar to MongoDB or Couchbase DB, AWS have its own NoSQL database, which we call as DynamoDB. So DynamoDB is a fully managed database and it is managed by AWS. So that is something we are going to look into on how we can create and store this kind of data inside this particular DynamoDB service. So that is basically your NoSQL database and our DynamoDB is basically a NoSQL database itself. So now what is DynamoDB? DynamoDB is fully managed service by AWS, which will help you to store NoSQL data inside this particular database. So what is DynamoDB? A fully managed NoSQL key value or document database by AWS. And key points to highlight over here is that it's a serverless database. So no server provisioning or management, no server. That means it is a serverless database. It's a big thing, right? So if you go back over here, and if you think about RDS, this RDS that we have seen in the last video. So if you remember, we had to create a RDS instance with one of these databases. So we need to give which database engine I want and I need to configure all the memory and stuff. That means I'm creating a server for it. And inside that server, I am going to deploy or run this particular database. And of course, the infrastructure of it is managed by AWS itself. But the thing is, we need to configure and manage that, right? We need to manage the instance. If we don't need it, we need to delete that instance. Otherwise, it will just keep on charging us money, right? So that is a server we are talking about. But when it comes to DynamoDB, it's a serverless. It's a serverless service. We don't need to create an instance. It's a service running inside AWS. We just need to go ahead and add our tables inside it and start working on it. 
So let's say this is a Dynamo DB service running inside AWS. So what we need to do, let's say I'm creating a new application and I want to add this particular data, right? So this particular data is basically my user data, right? So what I will do, I need to create a section over here. So for my user data, I will need to create a new section over here inside a Dynamo DB, which they call as table, right? And I will, let's say, give the name to the table as my users table. So they call it as a table, but it is not like your row and column format. They just call it as a table. So it's a Dynamo DB table. And in this table now, what I can do, I can create an entry, right? So I can create a new entry with my ID, right? So this is basically, let's say my ID. And with this particular ID, I will have one entry inside this particular database. And this entry will contain all this particular data. So all this data will be there. Now I can just add another user. And I can just simply add another data by using a new ID and I can go ahead and keep on adding. So this is basically my user data and I'm storing it as in this particular table in the DynamoDB. Now let's say I need to store another data. So let's say I want to create another table for the inventory of my shop. So I will just say inventory table. And in this table, I will keep on adding the data related to inventory. Let's say this is I123, I124. This is basically the primary key of the data. And inside this particular entry, we will have the same data in this particular format. Whatever details I want, inventory details, I will just add it in this particular format. And I can keep on going. I can add as many number of tables as I want over here. I can just keep on adding depending on my use case. So this is basically how the DynamoDB works. And this is how you can create different tables inside your DynamoDB. And it's a serverless service which also provides you auto scaling. So if your number of requests are increasing, DynamoDB will scale itself so that it will give you a quick responses. It always gives responses in milliseconds, no matter how much data you're storing. So that is basically the beauty of DynamoDB. So the next point is scale automatically, low latency performance, not at all latency. It is basically very smooth and very quick database. After that, it provides IAM or encryption security as well to secure your data. After that, this guy also offers caching streams, time to live and global tables as well. So a lot of useful stuff basically. So all these things will be provided by DynamoDB. Now what we can do, let's go to AWS console and let's see how we can create DynamoDB table. So let me go to AWS console. So this is basically AWS console. I have logged in by using my root user. And what I will do, I will just go ahead over here and I will search for DynamoDB. There we go. So there we go. Amazon DynamoDB, a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for any scale. Any amount of data you can store, this is going to be fun. So if you see over here, DynamoDB is fully managed key value document database that delivers single digit millisecond performance at any scale, single digit milliseconds, like one millisecond, two millisecond, it gives you that much amount of quick data. After that, they, they have highlighted some other features over here. For example, performance at scale. So it is basically auto scaling. So they are basically talking about auto scaling. No servers to manage means it is serverless as we have discussed already. After that, it is enterprise ready and including support for ACID transactions. And they have provided few use cases as well. For example, ad tech, gaming, retail, media and entertainment. So this is basically the use cases. You can use it for storing NoSQL databases inside your enterprise applications. If we discuss about the pricing, if you are using free tier account, then 25 GB storage of DynamoDB will be free. So you can go ahead and use it. So what we can do now, let's go ahead and create a table. If you see, we have a bunch of details over here, right? Now here we need to enter the name of our table. So let's say users. So let's say users is my table name. After that, we need a partition key. So this is basically the key that we were talking about. So the primary key, consider it as a primary key of your data inside your table. So partition key is basically table's primary key. It's a hash value that is used to retrieve items from your table and allocate data access host for scalability and availability. So they use it as a primary key and they store it in hash format for fast retrieval. Now here what I will do, I will just say user ID. Here if you see we have given this user ID, so same we will give and it's in string format and it's a bare minimum thing that you need. After that you can add some other keys as well but not mandatory. There is something called a sort key which is the second part of table's primary key and it basically allows you to sort the result, right? But as you can see, it's an optional field. You don't really need to provide it. So we have provided the partition key itself. After that, you have table settings. 
First we have default and we have customizable settings. So default is basically the fastest way to create your table. They have all the things defaulted basically. So you can go ahead and just create it. So if you go inside customize settings, we have a lot of options available. For example, table class. That means the table class to optimize your database cost based on your workload. We have a lot of things over here, which we really don't need to look into because Amazon takes care of that itself in this particular default setting. And we don't need to go ahead and customize all those settings for us unless it is really needed. But in my experience, we don't really need to tune anything over here. The default settings over here work just fine for any enterprise level application. After that, here we have default settings. So they have highlighted all the default settings that they have. So if you see over here, table class is basically standard capacity mode on demand. And all these other default settings are basically present over here. After that, if you want to add any tag, you can just go ahead and add it to the respective table. And once you are done, you can just go ahead and say create table. So if you see over here, we have this option of create table available. So you can just go ahead and create on click on create table. Now, as you can see, it is creating the table for us. So if you see over here, it is creating a table status is basically creating. It should create the table in some time. So if you see over here, it is already active. So our users table was created successfully. So it is that simple to create a table inside your dynamo db. Now let's go inside this particular users table and let's see what do we have. So let me just minimize this so that is clearly visible. So if you see, we have this general information over here on what is partition key. After that, what is sort key? We did not really give it. We have capacity mode. We have the status of the table. We can get the live item count from here. How many items are present inside this particular DB? We have additional information of the table over here. If we need to enable streams or TTL, we can go and uh, enable it from here. We don't really need it at this point of time After that it will show auto scaling activities. So if our application is getting a lot of read write requests, then it will just auto scale accordingly. We don't really have to look into it. And if you see, we have a throughput over here. So we have 12,000 read units per second throughput and 4,000 write operations per second throughput. So it's basically a lot. And what you can do, you can go to explore items. So there is a tab called as explore items over here which will help you to explore what exactly are present inside your table. So let it just load. It will show us the details. Now, if you see, we have this particular users table over here. Let me again minimize this. So we only have one table. If you have multiple table, you will see a lot of tables over here. And if I click on this, then we will get the information about this table. And if you see over here, it will start showing the items over here. What is the item present inside your Dynamo TV table? What you can do, you can just quickly go ahead and create an item from here itself. So I can just say create item. I, I will just give a partition key. For example, what partition key we have, let's say this one. I will just give this value. After that, other values you can add from here. So this is basically the partition or primary key. How about other attribute? So you can just click on add new attributes. Let's say I want to add a string over here. Let's say we need to give name and I will give my name over here. After that, let's add one more. Let's say another string, let's say email. And here I will just say example at the rate gmail.com. No matter how many field you want to add, you can just keep going and add them. So I will just say create item. And now if you see, we have this particular item. So as we have seen over here, so now the user table we have created with the name as users and the first entry we have added so as you can see this is basically our first entry and if i go inside it you will have this particular data here you can go ahead and check it in json view as well so this is basically the json view and this is a dynamo db json format so if you see over here view dynamo db json so in dynamo db json you will see the type of it as well like it is a string or integer or what it is if i disable it it's a plain json basically so you can go ahead and add any number of data over here and let's try to create another item now. So I will give it ID as let's say u124 and I will add let's say another string let's say name let me give name as Pushparaj after that I will add let's say another field this time I won't add email let me add address I'm not sure what is the address of uh, Pushparaj so I will just say Hyderabad and I will just say create item now, if you see the entry is created this time, the email is empty because we did not provide email, but for the initial entry, our address is empty. 
let me just minimize it so that it's clearly visible so if you see over here again for our first entry address is null and email is present but for our second entry we did not really add this particular email but we have added address over here so this is basically unstructured data you can add any entry you want right unstructured data no sql data you can keep on adding whatever you want under this user id whatever data you want you can just go ahead and add it over here so that is basically the beauty of your dynamodb and no sql databases that is how you can simply go ahead and create your dynamodb tables right it is a pretty simple stuff now at this point of time we have added the data inside this particular dynamodb manually from aws ui itself but now in the next video what we will do we will create a spring boot application and we will try to store data inside this particular dynamodb table from our spring boot application and try to perform operations on it and let's have a quick review of the features provided by dynamodb so so dynamodb is serverless no provisioning needed it provides auto scaling as well high performance millisecond response right no matter how much data you are storing you will always get responses in milliseconds after that you can make use of dynamodb streams so it provides streaming option as well just like kafka streams it's a real time data change tracking right after that we have dax which is in memory caching provided by dynamodb we have time to live we can expire the data if you want to do any kind of purging you can do by using time basis after that we have gsi and lsi which are indexes for queries this is something which is a very advanced feature we don't really need to understand it at this point of time we will understand it later when we actually go ahead and look at the use case of that after that we have fine grained control access control by using iam as it is integrated with iam just fine for example let's say you want to access this particular dynamodb table from ecs then you can make use of i am roles and permissions as well after that backup restore options as well are available for on demand and point in time backup and restore is also available in dynamo db so it is basically a cool service provided by aws in order to store no sql data so we have seen what is no sql we have seen what is dynamo db we have created a dynamo db table and we have seen few features of it as well and we have added some data inside dynamo db table and we have performed few operations over there as well so if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet your little effort of subscribing will give me more enthusiasm to create more such videos share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about what is dynamo db that's it for this video see you in the next video